Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. It's great to see everybody again. And here we are with Dr. Liz Lister, our favorite, favorite doctor, and uh, John Coleman, my favorite, favorite partner. Well, thank you, Art. Dr. Liz, great to see you again. Likewise, thank you. You know, we've been talking about um, ways to stay healthy. And uh, a couple of times you've mentioned uh, mobility, moving. Mm -hmm. And, of course, exercise is always on everybody's list. Am I getting enough exercise? But in a recent um, video, you talked about uh, longevity, and it included one of the markers was mobility, not necessarily exercise. So what's the difference? I am so glad you asked that. You know, sometimes I even refer to exercise as the E word. People really, <laughs> yeah, people people get a little put off. Well, let me answer your question. Let me start us off with a question for you gentlemen. And that is, based on what you've learned or what you've heard or read, how much exercise per week do you think a person needs in order to stay healthy? What have you heard? Um, exercise per week, I would say uh, five hours a week. Yeah, I would say uh, probably an, an hour a day. Uh, uh, and I know that what I try to do uh, on my side is uh, I practice Tai Chi about five days a week for about an hour and a half to two hours each, which is, uh, uh, it doesn't look like a lot of exercise, but it's a lot of movement. And uh, Okay, I, well, you're... You're above average, okay, but you you were asking, I was asking what people are aware or people what people understand is how much exercise do we need to do every week in order to stay healthy? Five hours? So, John, okay, so you, that's, that's not a bad guess, and it's actually a trick question. Ah. Okay, because if you think about it, there's 168 hours in the week, and the actual recommendation for exercise is... 30 minutes a day, five times a week. Have, have you heard that recommendation before? No, I think yeah. a lot of our Probably, listeners yeah. will have heard that. That's kind of a standard. And so that's 150 minutes per week. Mm. All right. And if, if people report, when they do studies, and people say that they get 300 minutes per week, which is about what you're describing, five hours. Is my math good? Five hours of exercise about three and that is considered extremely active when really? these kinds of studies are done yes however we've also john talked about our ancestors okay our human ancestors you know ten thousand years ago it's estimated that they were probably moving at least three thousand minutes per week yeah they were constantly walking they didn't sit correct constantly yeah. walking looking for food doing whatever they were doing in their daily life and even more recently than that. And so this brings us to answering your question, which is we want to draw a distinction between exercise, the E word, and activity. Activity is what we're doing. Even if you're getting those five hours, which again, that remember, that's extremely active. That's a hundred and... 63 hours of not moving and that is not good for yeah. our health yeah all right so what do we do the rest of the time we can get neat what? we can do neat points non-exercise activity thermogenesis all right let me write that down let me write that down this again for our slow mind n-e-a-t -E yes n-e-a-t Okay. It's an acronym that I think people are going to hear more and more as we go, as we learn more about how important it is to keep moving, not be sitting at your desk all day. If you're in a meeting, try to stand up, sit down. Well, we'll get to more tips. Okay. Okay. But there's a lot of things and all the, even fidgeting is a, thank goodness, lucky for me, is a non-exercise activity thermogenesis. So thermogenesis is just a fancy word for generating heat. Burning calories, generating heat. So, so those people that are, are, you know, I call it nervous leg, but they they sit yeah. and they're they're bouncing on their toes. One knee is going up under the table while the rest of us sit sitting there calmly falling asleep. That's right. Um, in in the typical business meeting, that person is burning calories even with That's that little. Right. 
they are burning more calories than the people who don't have the jumping wow. foot. Uh -huh, that's what right. about people who are doing crossword puzzles? Is that? Well, I'm so glad you mentioned that because the brain burns 25% of our baseline calorie burning or the BMR, the baseline metabolic rate. Wow. Did you know, I, I was amazed when I learned how much the brain utilizes the energy that we expend uh, well, during I obviously day. have not been using my brain <laughs> because well, I've been putting on weight. No, but you have been using your brain because, uh, you know, first of all, you're my partner. And we, <laughs> we must do 3,000 minutes a week of conversation. Yes, but I'm going to have to start uh, wiggling my knees or something. So you may have to slack that. off a yeah. little bit and, and go to the refrigerator and sit in front of the refrigerator for a while. So, so I love this idea, Dr. Liz, that um, we can have we can be active, and we don't have to be exercising. That's in a traditional right. Traditional sense. This, is, this isn't about getting your heart rate up and sweating. That's right. Uh, this is about not sitting down and being lethargic and yes, uh, mm. yes, we sedentary. think that's right. That's exactly right. Another way, easy way to think of it is exercise being defined as planned calorie burning. You're planning. You're doing a workout at the gym. You're doing whatever you whatever you call a workout or an exercise session. Yeah. Any non-exercise activity, thermogenesis, is everything in between. And if you do a lot of neat type of activities, it could be up to half of your energy expenditure during the day. So it's an easy way to increase your calorie burning and avoid what you mentioned a moment ago, which is the, the calorie creep. Yeah. To keep that calorie creep away Right. A lot of what we ascribe to getting older, a lot of people who are experiencing, uh, they, they refer to it as lower metabolism or a little bit of calorie creep or creeping weight, that weight finding its way back to us. Right. We can help address that with NEAT rather than actual exercise. With NEAT, non-exercise. Non Thermo activity, thermogenics. activity thermogenics. Yeah. Which is going to be yeah. in the description below. Yeah. Perfect. Yes, yes. And people don't have to remember all of those long, many syllable words. Right. It's really a matter of, it's, it's the wisdom that people have heard. This is where you're taking the stairs instead of the elevator. This is where you are parking further away so that you're walking more to do whatever you're doing during your day. This is even sitting up straight, sitting up straight and hold, using your muscles to hold in your posture, that burns more calories than just slumping in the chair. Sure. Easy, fidgeting, even chewing gum. <laughs> <laughs> All kinds of activities that are going to help with calorie burn are going to give you points in the NEAT department. Good, but but I would assume that bending the elbow with a beer bottle does not count. Yes. Well, that's funny you should mention that because at least we still have that. One <laughs> of the reasons that this has become such a, an issue, not just because people are more sedentary in their jobs, you know, we're all in front of computers a lot more than 100 years ago. Nobody was sitting in front of a computer 100 years ago, pretty much, <laughs> right. mostly. But also everything else, think about all the labor-saving activities. The dishwasher, instead of standing and lifting the dishes and washing the dishes. Sure. The remote control for the TV. <laughs> you used to have right. to get up to change the channel. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the, the window in the car, you know, at the fast food place when they first appeared a few decades ago, at least you had to spend calories rolling down your window. Now you don't even have to do that. Yeah. So Boy, this you're, is really you're, not, uh, you're right on the money. Modern science, modern living yes, has modern made it real living. easy to be sedentary. Yeah. Right, so, John, so, John, one of the hints that when you go to the fast food place is don't wait in the drive through lane. Park, get out of your car, get the exercise of walking up to the counter, ordering, right. like at White Castle's, 3,000 hamburgers in a sack, okay, yeah. and walking back to your car. 
That'll solve it for you, okay? I'm just saying it's a possibility. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. so that was uh, nice Dr. Liz, me. great tips mm. uh, yes. and a great idea. A, yes. A interesting um, uh, approach to staying healthy, not necessarily exactly. losing weight. That's right. That's absolutely right. And I'll leave us with a really cool tip that I learned, which is the combination. You mentioned the brain. And I said how that the brain does burn a lot of calories for us, which is awesome. And also the fidgeting or the toe tapping. If you combine those and you're tapping your toe to music, for example, while you're doing something around your house, for example, wow. that actually augments. It, it's like a synergy between them because you're listening to the music and your brain is incorporating the music and that even more burns yeah. calories so you're getting extra super duper neat points so just so, want to encourage everyone to to keep so moving. i would imagine then that that playing music would be uh thermogenic as well absolutely you're reading the like reading the sheet music and you're yes working your instrument whatever it is and your absolutely. brain is going constantly you got it well what a, what a set of neat ideas <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Liz, for, again, giving us uh, things to think about that will help us have longer, healthier, productive lives. Thank you. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.